that's such a poetic, beautiful, moving ending. And I'm sure a lot of people in the audience were transported back to the time of what one might actually call real cinema. Uh, my apologies for saying this, but I do think it was a special time in film history and watching films on celluloid is an experience that just can't be matched to it, uh, you know, by digital cinema. There will be people who might have a different opinion. Uh, so let me um, start by saying, so, so the format we're going to follow is that we're going to, we are going to have a conversation for about 30 minutes, I'm not sure, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm told that you have a lot to say, <laughs> so, and then we open it out to the audience. So uh, those of you who have questions or comments or just want to share your memories of watching some of these films, please uh, do so. So you know, I, I was uh, thinking of there's a number of uh, films being made on filmmakers by their kids. Now it's like a, almost a genre that I've been noticing. Yeah. Um, one that I can name is a film on Sukhde, who was a films division a filmmaker, and uh, his daughter made a film recently. It's called The uh, Final Ado. A uh, very moving film again. Uh, so I was wondering, you know, because uh, this film uh, tells us a lot about Bimal Roy, the filmmaker. So my qu first question to you is, what was it like making the film for you, directing the film? Very cathartic, actually because I didn't really know my father. He died when I was uh, just about to turn 11. And in a way, I think this film was a search for him, because, uh, um, I mean, I, I'd seen the film, so I knew him as a filmmaker, but I wanted to know what he was like as a man. I seen through the eyes of people who had worked with him. So it was very moving very moving to be interviewing these people who had actually worked with him, spent time with him. So. Oh, uh, yeah, and so, so did you ever struggle with, uh, you know, decisions around how much of the personal person within the domestic space to bring in versus Pimal Roy as a filmmaker? No, actually, I had to very limited footage of uh, personal footage. So I didn't have much of a choice in that sense. But I did have a lot of uh, choice when it came to the film itself. Uh, so the selection of maybe scenes or whatever um, was difficult. But if you follow a certain logic, then they have to connect with the commentary or the Thing. So therefore, it's always an illustration of whatever is being said. So again, the choices were limited. So in many ways, it's a, I mean, I would like to think that it's a logical film. It follows a certain logic. So, so I mean, you know, when I was uh, watching the scenes from Sujata where uh, there's a commentary around how uh, the movement of the leaves, yes. uh, and I think uh, Vajanti Mala says it's poetry on say right? Yeah. Uh, and it really is, like you're struck by the balance uh, of within the frame of how much is to the left, how much is to the right. So when you were making the film and as you were re-watching the film, did you sort of have your own interpretation or memories associated with any of these films that you have used footage from? I think uh, personal memory only of Sujata because uh, part of that song was shot in our garden. So I remember that. And uh, the song Nani Kali, I went for the recording with my mother. And uh, what Kamini Koshal said about shoot, uh, uh, shooting at the time of the whatever the scene was meant to be. So I remember it was a late night recording. And then we were falling asleep on my mother's lap. So obviously the lullaby was effective. It did work. Right. Um, and I also have a copy of the book, the ed book edited by your sister on uh, Bimal Rai. And you know, it's very interesting to read uh, the number of essays in it, including yeah. the first opening one by Masha Tamiri, of course. Uh, and to uh, actually get a perspective of how he was viewed uh, very differently by so many people, right? right. 
Uh, so uh, maybe you could share a little bit about the kind of, I mean, one thing that comes out persistently is his quiet demeanor, his ability to yes. get from his actors what he really wants without too much of conversation. And I was watching right. something, an uh, interview by uh, Luthan, mm. um, and I, you know, I mean, I have to say that Sujata and Bandini are some of my favorite uh, films, Bandini in particular. Right. Uh, and she talks about how there was very little instruction given yeah. and how she didn't want to do uh, uh, you know, uh, takes before the final yeah. take, right? Yeah. Rehearsals. Yes. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm, maybe, maybe you want to talk a little bit about his style of uh, direction with his actors and with his crew, if you had any kind of experience. experience yeah. no. First of all, my father uh, didn't want us to have anything to do with the film world. So I uh, actually don't. I did go to. Uh, as my sister's here actually. So they, they were mad fans of Shashi Kapoor, but they weren't supposed to go to the set. So I was made the excuse. But, you know, I wanted to see Shashi Kapoor. Total lie, but anyway. So that's that's how we sneaked into Prem Patra and I was dead bored because it was a hospital scene and the same thing kept getting shot. But, you know, she he has bandages round his eyes and Sadhna's there and it was really boring, so I, that was when I was very small. So I don't really, you know, we didn't go on to the sets, I don't remember anything. No. So when you grew up, when you got older and you kind of realized that my father is this amazing filmmaker, mm -hmm. what was that rediscovery of Bimal Rifle? How was that process of, you know, I mean, you knew him as your father. You know, when I was in school, I didn't know that my father made films. He was like a like a father, he went to work. I didn't know what he did. But it was the other kids, you know, who kind of brought it to my attention that my father was a little different from other fathers. So, uh, and he died too early for me to even realize. Uh, so the first film, actually, uh, I saw Dobi Gazamin for the first time after he died. And that's why it's a very painful memory, you know, because it's a very sad film. And uh, so, uh, I would say the sensitivity of and the, his, the way that he dealt with characters, the very uh, nuanced characterization of, uh, you know, uh, was apparent. And anybody who sees it would realize that. So it was not as any special realization, but yeah, I mean, for example, as you grew older, I was I used to admire the script of Madhumati because you know it's got twists and turns, and even though it's a suspense film, and you find out, you know, at the end, you know the end. Gatak script. Right? Yes, Gatak story. Even though you know the end, you still can watch the film. That's why many people watch it over and over again, and that I think is a real feat you know, for that to happen. So I guess that he understood the medium so well that he actually could, it was like a toy, like, a, you know, it was, it's almost like a planned thing that he would play with, the, you know, and he, because he knew what would emerge finally, he had that vision. So you can see from the films that the beginning, middle, end, the way that the progression takes place, very carefully thought out. So uh, he worked with perhaps two of you know the most remarkable uh, studios in India, yes. um, Bombay Talkies and New Theatres. Mm -hmm. So can you uh, you know maybe talk a little bit about what is it that got him interested in films in the first place? Well, actually, it's there in the film because uh, he apparently wanted to act. So, but he couldn't obviously it didn't work. So Nitin Bose told him that since, you know, why don't you, are okay with the still camera, why don't you join the camera department? But uh, I believe he was interested in theatre when he was younger. Um, I don't know, maybe it was, he just lucked out, like he found the right thing to do. And therefore, I always believe that unless you excel in something 
Uh, or rather, only if you love something, you can excel in it. You know, passion. So I guess he had that. There was a passion in it. I mean, I, I suppose I'm asking this question because I'm interested in early cinema and done some work on it, and it's, uh, you know, it's it's kind of fascinating how this new medium comes into the country, yes. and then you have like this large number of people who are incredibly talented, but come from such a different kind of class spectrum in society, right? And uh, how the industry actually manufactures itself, beginning in Calcutta, and then of course. Also, he saw the advent of sound, even though he joined, I mean, he joined around that time, 32, I think was around the time that he joined the initiative, but 35 was his first independent film. So, I mean, it was like a whole changeover. And the other changeover, of course, that I think he, I don't know if he could have, of course, he would have if he had to. But to change from black and white to color, that would have been a, quite a traumatic transition, I'm sure. But he was spared that because last film was Bandini and then he passed away.